<laughs> Hello. Like we got Art locked up, huh? Uh, I don't know. He's in a little box. He must not have his video. I don't know. I don't. It just says he's joining. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Maybe he hadn't accepted the recording yet. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know this, this, uh, I think I'm going to have to uninstall zoom on my computer and reinstall it. Is it, uh, I have to log in every time and it doesn't remember any of the settings that I set for it. Use window. You wouldn't have that trouble. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's ever since I reloaded. I think I did it to myself. I think I, I think I copied the Zoom directory over before I installed Zoom. So I think I did it to myself. Yes, teaching you some of my lessons. Yeah, you're gonna be just like me. <laughs> okay, here. Here comes Art, maybe. I'm here. Well, there you are. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. that's much better, yeah. And he's, and he's local host today. Okay. 127.0.0.1. That's local host, right? Yep. Yep. Most of the time. Most of the time. Of course, your shirt says there's no place like 127.0.0.1, which would mean home. Okay. There's a meeting schedule. March first two first two Thursdays in March, first two Thursdays in April. We're all scheduled up. <clears throat> okay. Researchers tapped into the world's largest sink of CO2 for carbon capture. That would be the ocean. <laughs> They're coming out with ways of getting CO2 out of the ocean. Yeah, that's, that's an art assignment. Read that and explain it to us in English. <laughs> Looks like they have some sort of membrane they're looking at uh, capturing the CO2 out of the ocean and putting the carbon, depositing the carbon in this ocean somewhere or something. <clears throat> Usually they put it in the mantle in the uh, area underneath the ocean. Oh, okay. But... Um... Okay, for some reason or another, that is a really small tech. Um, Car makers are switching to a cheaper EV batteries. Uh, they <clears throat> it looks like they, they have alternative. Uh, it's uh, lithium iron phosphate is the alternative. It's cheaper, but it has problems. It doesn't do well in cold as well in colder weather. <clears throat> And you don't get as much mileage out of it, but they're they're looks like they're planning to. Some of the vendors are going to give offer two flavors: the high mileage and low mileage. And the low mileage is going to be the lithium ion, and it's going to be very low in winter, about half the capacity. Oh, I found a digital library of amateur radio and communications treasure trove. It's got seventy three magazine back for. 50 years. Yep. And it's got the uh, call books back 50 years. So you can go back and look yourself up in the call book if you have a ham radio call sign. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> only if it's since uh, 
50 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they have some relatively recent ones. Yeah. I looked yeah, mine up. I looked mine up in 69. I've, I've found my grandfather's in some archive somewhere from. Well, wait a minute. 69. Yeah. That's over 50 years ago. Uh, dang. Seemed like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I try to look mine up, and mine was, my first one was 57. So okay. um, I bet you they have it. Uh, I couldn't. And and I actually wrote a letter, this is back 20 years ago, to the FCC, and they said prior to some date, which was since 1957, uh, the, it had been all put in a database, but before that, they would have to send somebody into the paper archives to dig the thing up. Yeah, well, and, these, are, these are actually copies of the call book, the call book. Yeah. Call book. Yeah. yeah. They're actually yeah. the copies. Yeah, but the FCC didn't publish the call books. That was yeah. the ARRL. Okay. Are so they? at any rate, what the FCC says was before, well, I don't know, some date, it was some date in the 60s, late 60s. Uh, you were just SOL, so to speak. They put it more politely than that, but basically. <laughs> so um, for a while, I was uh, searching on eBay because people tend to sell old call books on eBay. They get a pretty good price for them. But um, I gave that up after a couple of years decided it wasn't in my budget so at any rate but i found my original novice license dated in august of 1957 uh -huh. <clears throat> and then those days the uh, novice was not renewable of course it isn't yeah. renewable now anymore unless you're a, a legacy owner and uh it was only for one year and after that, you had to upgrade to at least technician, and that was five years. But the deal with uh, that was very interesting. The deal with that was that you had to present, in order to renew, you had to present proof that for the last two years or something like that, you'd done a certain number of hours of, of um You'd been on the air for a certain number of hours. And that was right in the middle of when I was in college. So um, I'm afraid amateur radio uh, I fell off the table during the time I was in college. So, yeah. At any rate, I'll have to take a look at that and see if I can track down mine. Uh, we got uh, some new free TV channels. Uh, local now is we'll give you the local weather anytime. Just click on local now, and it'll it's an app under Roku, and you get the local weather weather right now, right there. Okay. <clears throat> and they also have a bunch of other news stations. You guys are getting a heat wave now for this time of year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have the fan on. I have the door open. It's still, I'm still warm. I was going to say, uh, my reading of, the, of my remote reading it was uh, showing in the low 60s this morning there in Milford. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's... I that's real time. I mean, that's my temperature sensors there. I was yeah. sitting on the front porch and, and noticed there was a snake in the brush. Oh, a snake in the grass, huh? Yeah. You call me a snake in the grass? Won't be the no. <laughs> so 
What kind of a snake was it? It was a live snake. There are only two kinds over here. <laughs> oh, this was, um, so it was a little grass snake, was it? Uh, it was, a, I don't know what kind it was. It wasn't green, you know, it wasn't like a green snake. That's all I can tell you. And we, we don't have the poisonous variety here, but I don't differentiate. It's a live snake or a dead snake, and I don't like either. Okay. So he got to have the front porch by himself. So the, the cats didn't go out and uh, harass him? No, they didn't know he was out there. I let Foofer out, and Foofer was around there looking in the bush. So Foofer would think it was a hoop. Yeah. Okay. But when he came in, I trial checked him to make sure he didn't have a snake on him. <laughs> that Foofer Foofer is not adverse to bringing in a chipmunk or whatever he happened to have handy. Live or dead? Doesn't matter. He doesn't differentiate like I do. <laughs> so what's your background there, uh, Leroy? Uh, that would be from Rick and Morty. Okay. Cartoon. Oh. That must be um, one I missed somehow or another. It, it, it's one you probably don't want to watch. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. So check this out. I found, wait a second. I will point to it. This is the 1970 uh, call book. And it was a little hard to find, but right here where my mouse is that's my grandfather ah. that would have been one of the last years that he he was still alive so he's there and that is uh that's where his shop was that's where his tv repair shop was so grand avenue middletown grand <laughs> avenue middletown And I have off of his building in my outside storage, I have his old uh, call sign that, that uh, mounted. And when I last checked, I I couldn't get his call sign. Somebody else had, had grabbed it or something. I tr I wanted to try to get in, try to get his call sign when I first got my license, but I couldn't do it. <clears throat> okay, here, 19, fall 1957, the amateur radio call book. Where do you, where did you find that? It said, look at that link that I sent you. That's uh, in the. Uh... They're, they've got a bunch of, they're, they're, the problem is, is they're not searchable. So you've got to manually what district, the, what district were you thing. in? Uh, eight. I was in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. We got Columbus, Ohio. And I'll go to the single page uh, view. And what were your call letters? Uh, K8HJF. Okay. H. K-H-F-G-H-H-J-H. At that point, it would have been K-N-H-J-F because in those days, novice had a, an N after the K. 
HJ, okay, yeah, there's no F, HJC. Uh, there wasn't a W8 arcade, okay, so, and they didn't have the WNs. That's a fall of uh, 57, so it maybe it's earlier than that. Um, fall of 57, it would have been KNHJF. KNHJF. Yeah, that, but they were they were behind in printing those. So you you know what I mean? Yeah, right. So let's see. Let me change to uh, change my search to fifty eight, maybe. Or yeah, well, fifty seven. Let's see, fifty seven. There are one hundred forty six. It's entry. <laughs> You're you're in the fifty eight, but I but it doesn't say anything. I'm in the fifty eight. Yeah. I, H H J F K N eight H J F. That's me, and it should have my name after it. Yeah, it's what I what I found was just a list of call signs that are in the book. No uh, names. No. The searchable text is just a list of call signs, nothing else. Okay. So now that I know that you're in that book, I could go and look at the book and actually find where you're at. Okay. Does that make sense? I think that makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And in first half of 58, <laughs> I would have been K N H J F. The last half, I would have been khjf that was when i went to uh i became a technician yeah yeah and for then you're you're in there as kn8 hjf okay that in, was first in the 58 half. yep in the uh, yep that would have been first half and that would have been uh before i became a, a tech technician yeah so the the online archive isn't it doesn't have great searchability, but once you know what book you're in, you could figure it out. <laughs> okay. Well, I will look. At, is that the same link that Jim has in the? Uh... Uh, yes. Okay, I will go so you, look at. You the... need to look for summer of 1958. Okay. So that's where they I had them you. broken down by season or they had them broken down by uh, apparently month? this apparently yes it, this one was summer of 58 and district eight so yep they, they do have them broken down by uh, <coughs> by the uh, district numbers so yeah I would have been tried to make it a little easier to find. I would have been at 299 Charleston, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus 14, Ohio. That was before zip codes, by the way. Oh, you're, in, you're in there. You no. should be able to find you some, somewhere. I will, <laughs> I will go look. So do, do they have every year from there on then? So would they have had 61 or 62? I'm uh, sure. They, uh, according to the uh, uh, collection that, that is there, they have 110 different versions of the book. So, starting, it looks like 92. Let's see what the last one is. Uh, yeah, they, they've got some really old books, 1919. But they skip around when you start getting that far back. It skips around a lot. 1930, 26. There is 62. 1962 is in there. So you just I put a I put a link directly to the call the call books. You just kind of gotta go and 
search, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. I just brought up the link. Yeah. They, according to the collection, though, they've got, well, one one side of the collection says 110, and this one says 108. So they've got quite a few, but they may or may not have the one you actually want. <laughs> well, I I just brought up the one that. Uh... <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah. Yep. There it is. There it is. <laughs> and I found a link to search the uh, deja vu text, and that was the text that just had the call sign, nothing else. Okay. Um, deja vu text. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put a I'll put a link. I like I said, Internet Archive, it's not it's they uh, it's not quite as easy to to search inside the text as we want it to be, but you can find it sometimes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, um, this has QSL cards in it. Oh, cool. It's got all kinds of stuff. But it's, they're not, let's see. Got popular electronic magazines too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh the the archive itself, the the large archive, the overall archive, they've got manuals and uh books and just all kinds of stuff. Popular electronics nineteen eighty four to nineteen ninety nine. Hmm. Ready journal. Uh, QST from 1915 to 2014. Linux in the ham shack, 494 items. That's a podcast. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. They've got 73 magazine listed two or three different times. Yeah. Yeah. 73 magazine, February 1973 was a good year. <laughs> you, will, you will reiterate that if you see it. <laughs> okay. Oh, there I am. Okay. <laughs> cool <laughs> he found him uh, arthur l r l c okay navy radio files huh. yeah i i was i was kind of there's 5,000 and some odd Navy radio files. <laughs> I'm a little curious about what all's in that. <laughs> Yesu Library. Huh. That should have manuals and stuff. No, oh, Vicente is logging in. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring this up. I just pasted something into the Oh, there you go. There you are. There I am. 299 Charleston Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. Hmm. Yeah. At one time, I had found an actual search engine that would search through the old call books, but I, I don't have that link anymore. I don't know what happened to that link. 
<clears throat> but like if you uh, if you knew somebody else's call sign, you could look them up. Did the sound just die? No, I can hear you. Okay. Well, let's. I just did a screenshot of that. Let's see if I can, if I managed to capture it. Hi, Vicente. Uh, hi. Speaking of screenshots, there is a Windows shortcut. Oh, you don't want to know about that. <laughs> No, I already uh, I already took a screenshot. Screenshot, yeah. Punch. I li I, I like actually, actually, I what I'm <clears throat> using now uh, on uh, Ubuntu 22.04 is something called Kazam. K A Z A M. Oh, that makes sense. Screenshot would be Kazam. Yeah, that's that's the Linux way. Yeah. <laughs> well, they used to have a direct screenshot built into Linux, but after 2020, 2020.04, 20.04, that was no longer there. And so I found this Kazam thing and it works it just as well. It, I, I bet it's still there. You just have to turn it back on. I probably, you're probably right. I, I just, I don't know why they turned it off. It drove me nuts too. And I had to, I had to go into uh, something. I don't even remember what it was and turn it back on. And then the shortcut key was wrong to it. So I had to remap the shortcut key to, to actually get it to work so uh -huh. it may it may be turned on and the shortcut keys mapped wrong just like could it be. was with me could be it's it's almost like um i i absolutely absolutely hate this new calculator this thing this is the worst piece of junk calculator ever and i can't get the old one back that is um that sets the bar fairly high there <laughs> worst ever okay oh that the uh the old one it the old one was was made by the same people but the keys were uh organized so that they actually made sense now there's uh the undo button is up on the top bar for no good reason so if you need to fix something you have to actually use your mouse to get to it you can't just hit the backspace button now oh, i hate this new calculator the uh the uh scientific part of it it's just messed up. I, I hate this new calculator. And it won't let me uninstall it and put the old version on because the old version's not supported in the repositories anymore. I'm sorry. That's my that's my rant for the calculator. Can't oh, you? No, no, I'm sure you can come up with another one. Gee. I was going to say, uh, can't you... Um... <laughs> uh <clears throat> install it from a legacy version um it uh it it's not even it, i'm on 21 uh 21 one and uh this is the version that the repository started with so oh. even <laughs> even when i tried to uh add the old repositories in it then it was like these repositories are incompatible with this version. I'm like, no, they're not, but whatever. <laughs> so they don't have a back port? No, I didn't I didn't see one. Uh, 
but I would I was like this this new calculator just seems like it's changed just for the sake of changing just to make it's it got worse. a lot of features on it man look at all the <clears> buttons man yeah but they're all in the wrong spot and they're almost forcing you to use the mouse so you used to be able to just use the 10 key on the side of the, on your keyboard and do everything you needed to do you know the clear button everything it was all right there but worst calculator ever and that's the one they that comes stuck with the thing if anybody knows a good replacement calculator i'd be happy to to ditch this thing and get a different one windows has got one no <laughs> actually you know my the calculator on my phone which is not all that great is better than than this piece of uh, well is the calculator on your phone just a four function or is it have log and analog um, and tan and so forth and so on. I, I'm I'm pretty sure it's a scientific calculator. I think I've got. I think I have to turn that all that on. Okay. Yeah, I've got I've got tangent and oh. You are <laughs> doing that again. <laughs> we're looking right through you there. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I gotta turn it on if I want to use the scientific part, but it's all there. And okay. it's in a format that's actually kind of makes sense. <clears throat> I don't know. I I rarely use a calculator anymore, so I play a lot of those math games. And sometimes they get complicated enough that you kind of have to organize your your thoughts. And having seen them, see how you do the steps on a calculator makes more sense sometimes than just writing everything down. So here's one for you. Which is greater, e to the pi or pi to the e? That one, I don't know. Pi to the E, huh? That would be an error. No, no. Pi no. to the E. There's E to the pi, which would be E to the 2.14159268388, et cetera. Um, and the other is... Uh, pi 2.14 etc to the e which is the base of the natural of the natural logarithms okay back prior to handheld calculators when I was uh, an undergraduate. I remember that was one of the um, one of the one, one of the little side do I don't know if it was an extra credit or whatever uh, in uh, one of my introductory math courses. And in those days, you know, your only option was really to to uh, look it up in tables and so forth and so on. Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, which I still have one of. Um, it's completely obsolete because you can look all this stuff up online anymore, but uh, I had a 1959 Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, which my dad gave me, I remember. It was about that thick. It was about four inches thick. And rather than make it in a large format so you could get it on less pages, 
they it was on a format that was about four by six and it was on what we called onion paper in those days it was like bible paper uh, it was a very thin paper and uh, if you were allowed to use that on an exam you can hear all the engineering students thumbing through looking for the right table and so forth and so on. Days of iron men and wooden slide rules. A pocket, a pocket uh, internet. I'm sorry? It's like internet in a pocket. <laughs> well, sort of, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's like it's it's like a really heavy internet in your pocket. Yes. <laughs> Wikipedia. Yep. Yeah. Well, it had a lot of chemical and physical tables in it, and so forth and so on. It was actually uh, no. I uh, the answer to your question is I'm not moving to Columbus. Okay. That was where I lived in 1957 when I got my uh, novice uh, radio license. Okay, okay, okay. Back to the future. It's still there. Yeah. My nephew lives in it. I, I, like, I like your background. Uh, Leroy, I, I like your your shed, lab. The, the, your back, your background is. Oh yes. Is, well, oh yeah, yeah. That's a cool. What, what uh, happened with the bat cave? Um, I decided I needed to, to explore the multiverse of of Rick and Morty. <laughs> this is like a garage. Nice. I mean, God, there's there's so much stuff in in his garage, in Rick Sanchez's garage. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> you need to clean. Yeah, no, not me. Okay. So you're working against a green screen, I assume, Leroy. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. My my green screen is out to the seamstress to get chopped off and rehemmed, or at least that was the intent. It got as far as the trunk of my wife's car here in California, and <laughs> uh, has been there has been there for several months. I think it's been there since before we went to Ohio in November. <laughs> I just, my, my printer just finished that. And I thought it was going to be bigger than it was. <laughs> it's a little teeny tiny two piece spaceship that I thought was going to be at least twice the size that it turned out to be. <laughs> Is two piece? Yeah, got to glue it together. That isn't the Millennium Falcon, is it? Nope, that's the USS Defiant from uh, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Oh, okay. And I'm glad I printed it in green and didn't waste my gray. I don't have very much gray left, knowing that it is this small. So I should have printed it in gray because it would have been, it should have been gray, but. <laughs> You're in my universe. Okay. Hey, there's a, there's a Roomba back there too. I didn't, I didn't even see the Roomba. Yep. <laughs> Oh, there is. Yeah. Well, at yeah. least it looks like a Roomba. <laughs> yeah. And a robot head. There's a robot head. 
and uh, our clocks are different. And time. <laughs> they look the same. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they are in a mirror. Mirror. From, from, yeah. from our perspective, yeah. the, the image that I'm is it, on is mirrored. Yes. Now, when I play it back, it'll be right, but, but it's mirrored right now. Okay. So you'll notice I had the same background as last week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. I knew me and Vicente think a lot alike. <laughs> I, I am trying to use the Raspberry Pi um, zero. It's all it's all green and getting blocked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's the Raspberry Pi zero. Zero two W. 2W, okay. Second version. Yeah. Hard to find. I, I bought it in, in Micro Center. I, I don't remember. It was like nine, nine bucks or something. It was cheap. Now it's very hard to find. Yeah. I, I am trying to use it uh, in a virtual network. Uh, connection to to use it in a robot, you know, and program uh, the the board using Python and updating the the code very quickly. Mm -hmm. but I, I have problem with the PWM pins, the hardware pins. Yeah, I am trying to find a library or something to, you only, you only have two PWM controllers in the board and they are uh, deactivated by default. So you need to, in the init system, you need to activate the, the channels and then you need a library to use them, but uh, I, I, I was working with the Raspberry Pi Zero with a Python 2.7 or something, and the new library doesn't work in the, in the old Python uh, interpreter. So I need to upgrade the, the Python. I'm, I'm doing that in the other, the other board now. It say that we will last uh, for like 15 minutes in Raspberry, Raspberry uh, Pi 4. So in the Raspberry Pi 0, we last forever to upgrade. Still, still scrolling uh, files. So I, I think we'll be ready when we finish our meeting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, looks so. like Micro Center has some of the Picos, but they don't have any yeah, Raspberry yeah. Pis. They have the ra Raspberry uh, Pico, by Pico, right? Yeah. That's what it looks like. They've got the, the Picos. Uh, very, very, good, very good price, right? Um, looks like six bucks. This is the W, the... The, the that's that's the W, yeah. This is the the cheapest thing that they have now. So. Six bucks for the uh, Pico W and four bucks for just the Pico and five dollars mm -hmm. if you want to have the header headers already on it. Okay. So they're charging you an extra buck yeah. to put headers. 
to put headers on it. You probably have some guy sitting in the back room there with a soldering iron. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, now the Raspberry Foundation already sent them with yeah. and without pins. <clears throat> I don't see any any actual Raspberry Pis though. So but I I read somewhere that the Raspberry Pi Foundation was gearing up production again. They were getting ready to ship again. So well, supposedly they've been shipping all along, but they've been shipping them primarily to companies that build products based yeah. on that. And because they didn't want to take companies, small companies that build a product around the Raspberry Pi and yeah. put them out of business. Yeah. Um, so it was a matter of policy that they were shipping to. They got the, the priorities. Well, the OEMs were getting priority. Um, it's fine. Because I read something in place about a month ago, they were producing 200,000 a month, but they were all, or the lion's share of them were going to uh, OEMs. Yeah. Uh, I guess that makes sense, but. Well, you get a really black eye if you start putting downstream companies that depend on your product out of business, yeah, that's, that's not a good look. The optics of that are bad. Yeah, but you've got, you've got just users, end users looking at alternatives now, like, like the Libre computers and, you know, the orange pies and some Six of the other yeah and looking at um you know thin clients and stuff like that which all have a purpose and some of them you can get dirt dirt cheap i mean mm -hmm. especially compared to to the uh used prices of raspberry pies now well you can also get them they're just available so yeah so i I I uh I mean I I understand why they would want to support the OEMs first but it seems to me like there should should have been like some sort of mix you know OEMs get a certain percentage 80% or something and end users get a certain certain percentage just to keep everybody happy well, under this present circumstance, I don't think it's a question of keeping the least people just absolutely <laughs> upset. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to keep anybody happy under those circumstances. No. I agree. Raspberry Pi. It, they've, I, I don't know. Even though I own a couple of uh, non-Raspberry Pi boards, Raspberry Pi boards, they just work. They just do what they're supposed to do. So it's worth waiting for them, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but if you got a company, you're trying to ship product. I, there's I, no, I, such, no such a thing as waiting for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. But as a end user, it's it's worth waiting for the Raspberry Pis, I think, because they work. And I probably could sell all my Raspberry Pis and become a millionaire, though. <laughs> In eBay, you you can find uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero W for 50 bucks. Yeah, that's it's nuts. 10, 10, 10 times what you pay for it. Yeah. 
That's crazy. That's crazy, though. I, I have a lot of, of, of them. Well, I mean, maybe six or seven. I have one Raspberry Pi 4, three Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 3, and you know, maybe some of them also inside boxes with different projects already yeah. wide wired. I've got oh, two or three Raspberry Pi 2s, a bunch of Raspberry Pi 3s, and I think four Raspberry Pi 4s, and a whole bunch of zeros yeah. and zero Ws. You, you send a mail about uh, flow, flow lights or something? Yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, flood light that uh, you got, I had to replace the boards uh -huh. in my, and two other ones I've got, I found a replacement. And they, they're, they're okay. They are a little smaller than the original size, but uh, yeah, I got them working. Gail says they're real bright, and I'm using them in the garage. But you know, you can buy the you can buy the electronics for them for less than a buck. Shipped. So what happens? What fails in them? Uh, they have a circuit board. It's aluminum, basically. It's an aluminum board, and the board fails. Yeah. They, they, they sustain a lot of heat. Or, I mean, it's, it's very hot, the, the, the lamp when it's on. Yeah. And they get, they get, they, they get too hot. Yeah. But the uh, the boards are cheap enough. They're just that's why that's why they're only five bucks a piece. The the, the housing was worth more than five bucks, but the, they they just weren't designed to get rid of enough heat, or they or they wouldn't put in there. When I pulled the board out the back, uh, the uh, silicone was a little wasn't quite solid back there. <clears throat> I happen to have uh, silicone. Uh, 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 injector, and uh, so I put some silicone on them and got them both in service. We'll see how long they last. But the screw holes don't match. The new ones, they don't make, I don't think they make that old, the larger size anymore. But it was, it was cute. You, I was kind of surprised I could find the boards. Uh, they they they're just a board, and you uh, you connect 120 to it, and you're good to go. And the the housing that we had had the uh, photo eye built in, and the photo eye handles 120 volts, and you just wire the photo eye in, and you're good to go, just like new. Mm. So the the board it's aluminum board. It's about the one and a half by two inches, and it's got the uh, cob uh, LEDs built into it. And it uh, worked, worked pretty good, but just too much heat didn't, didn't displace enough heat. Well, so do they have them potted uh, with the silicone? Yeah, the back of it mounts against the back. Uh, I'll show, let me show you guys some pictures. I need to torture somebody and y'all are handy. <laughs> and that's what it looks like. That's the old board and see the uh, the silicone there was 
kind of spotty, looks like. That's after it's pulled out. There's a the wiring. Uh, there's there's hot and there's neutral, and there's a, a a junction box for your photo cells to wire through. That's just a junction place. The new ones didn't have that. Oops, there's a truck. There's a truck. That truck shouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah, I ratted him out. Well, there's a there's the run up in Eaton, Ohio. It was over the weekend. There's the uh, the new boards. I broke them apart. They have L and they have N. They don't have that neutral neutral point there. That's a so those twenty four LEDs. Looks like it. That one's definitely got twenty four. And the new board is slightly smaller than this. Actually, that's better than being slightly bigger. Yeah, that's true. So I just slip it in there and away we go. Was the, the the new boards? These are the this new is, boards right there. This is a heat conductive. Past. So that that's that's one big LED, or is that a still? No, it's an array. It looks just a... like these, except these have got a cover over them. Okay. Got yellow yellow tape like stuff over. Them. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, are, you, the... are you using the the white pass for conductivity for the heat? I've got uh, uh, a uh, hyperdermic uh -huh. with silicone uh, stuff in it. Okay. And you, I just spread this on the back of that and uh -huh. pushed them in. But the way these things are mounted, uh, this is like a spring pushing that down against the back. So I just took the screws out, put the silicone in the back, and shoved them in and put this in. It has a uh, looks like neoprene rubber thing here. Put that in there, and that pushes, puts force in it against the back of it. I don't know how long it's going to last before it destroys itself, but uh, got to go. This is this actually switches 120 volts right there, and works great. Uh, so that we'll PIR, see. that PIR. Uh, that's, PI, that's PIR, yeah. Oops, those guys again. Yeah, it works. It's, it's pretty good. Both of them are, are, I mean, almost exactly identical as far as the field of view for this. It works good. It works good. PIR, that PIR is, is good. That's a common... Uh, PIR device there. You'll find that on a lot of their stuff these days. But that switch is 120. Does a good job. And I got That's five bucks for the whole thing. It lasted a couple of years <laughs> till, till I had to replace this. So now I got both of them mounted and back up there. So your garage must be pretty bright when the thing comes on. Oh, this it's not the only thing that comes on. I've got the 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 garage door opener that comes on when anyone's in there. And then I've got two 100 watt equivalent regular bulbs at the front of the garage and now these two on the side on both sides. So, yeah, you're well lit up when you get in my garage. Look, I have a uh, flow lights that already have the the sensor, the light sensor, oh, yeah, and the, yeah, and the movement sensor inside the the lamp itself. You know. Oh, okay. 
So yeah, I, I'm using the Dust of Dawn version of that. Uh -huh. I, I bought, I got some of those. And I, I didn't want those. I want the guys, when they come up to my house, the light's going to be on already. Yeah. I, you're not going to be surprised. You're going to be no from 200 feet off that that guy's got some terrible lights. <laughs> you want to turn on uh, them uh, any moment. You need to flip twice the, the switch. You know, right, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, these uh, these are dust of dawn. I don't know if they do that or not, but some of the others, like the ones you have, do that. Yeah, I've I've had those. But I they, like they, the dust they, of dawn. When you come by my place at night, I'm lit up, buddy. <laughs> but they they are off by night. But if you if they sense movement, they turn on by night. Right, right. Yes. But yeah, they won't work. Pretty nice, no problem. Yeah, the, the newer ones are, they're saying they're using radar technology. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I've got some that use radar technology. I said, oh, okay. And, uh, the, and I didn't want them because I want my lights to come on. I don't want to flip two switches or nothing. And when it gets dark, you're going to be lit up. There's no choice. <laughs> So you can you can get the dusted on version, and now they have them with the camera mounted at the end. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Organic Turkish apricots. Okay. And I can open up the color. Oh yeah. So do you share those with the dog or, or oh, he only no. gets peanuts? <laughs> <laughs> he only we, gets... we have the different food. Well, he likes chicken as I, I like. I could eat, he, he eat anything, you know. And this is set to be fit on your local PBS station. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, they had a real good one this week. Uh, I don't know if I showed you guys this one or not. I need, you guys need a little torture work going here. <laughs> This is on the in the desert. These are desert flowers. Beautiful. Cool. Oh, that's that's not a green screen. No, that that that's a video. They show a video, but she goes no. These she goes to these various places. She's sitting out in the middle of the desert near the mountains. It's okay. not a green screen, or is real? Yeah, she's sitting there. It's real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's. She was sitting there in Hawaii on the rocks and one of the waves come up and splashed her one time. <laughs> no, she wasn't on, she wasn't green screen. She was there, buddy. Well, so this is, is on every morning, 9.30. Is this yoga, like, like yoga or? or no, this is happy the, yoga is the name of the program. Stretching. Yeah. And they have uh, the other one sit to be fit. Uh, Uh, that's a good one. That's a sit. That's a sitting down one, but happy yoga and then sit to be fit comes on on uh, sixteen three. Uh, depending on if you listen to Dayton, it'll be fourteen something if you listen out of Cincinnati. But those are good geezers. Need to be doing that. And I went through. That's about my getting up down. So I come down here and I can't avoid it. It's on TV. Dead come it. But you need to you need to improve. Watch out for your flexibility. You need it. I need I need it. Yeah. You you are pretty busy. You're always doing something, Vicente. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, not always. I was able to actually read seven books this month. They were all short books. Oh, wow. This week, you got any I, good books? Oh, no. wow. oh that's that's your uh, your encoder. Your yeah. Encounter. Yeah. But this time I, I made everything with Python, MicroPython. Okay. And I, I figure out how to use both I2C buses. So I don't need to use a I2C, I2C multiplexer. Uh, to, to, to use this controller here, you need four PWM signals to move the motors, you know? But there is another controller that you only need two uh, PWM because you have two pins to choose direction. And the PWM is always the same pin, you know? So I bought in Amazon this, the board that use just two PWM for the two motors. Yeah, it's like the speed pin, the speed, and the other two pins are direction and brake breaking a uh, short break or something like that when you put the same value in, in both, both pins. Um, the idea is to, to use the, the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero to control uh, two encoders, to, to read two encoders and to control two motors and use the, your computer to, to design your program and make the robot, the robot just move. I'm working in a, in, a, in a code to make the robot go straight, some kind of differential driving. Oh. You, meet, you, you are measuring both wheels speed and you try to maintain both wheels at the same speed all the time with a PID controller. It's a, a single equation where you change the parameters until the, the robot moves smoothly forward instead of like a snake. Yeah. I, I work in, 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 the, in the software and all, all, also the hardware. The, the, the board is already in the mailbox, just arrived from Amazon. Those, those controllers are uh, Three for uh, 12, 12, bo uh, 12 box, three boards, but in Amazon, but in, in AliExpress, they cost two box each. Because it's cheap. But uh, there are no much uh, uh, motor drivers that use this concept of. Uh, a pin for speed and a pin for direction, you know? So this, this, this chip has this uh, characteristic. I, I will try to use it. Maybe the next week we'll see how it's going. What, what motor driver are you using right now? Is the, the the L... Uh, let me look for an image. I don't remember the, the name is L12. Just a second. Thank <laughs> you. 
The other computer is sleeping. Windows is, is, is still sleeping, doesn't, doesn't wake up <laughs> the, the desktop. Let me check in the, in the web. Uh, is, it, is it that one? No. No? Okay. This, uh, it's a tiny one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I had problems like, uh, two weeks ago with my uh, meeting thing, uh -huh. where at the end, uh, the problem was <clears throat> with um, Chrome, with the, with the browser Chrome, and the solution was to change from Chrome to Chrome without the E, to change the name of the, of the software. To it's another to, browser with the no, it's the same browser, but I changed the name because the operating system uh, doesn't uh, let uh, Chrome to boot up, you know, some some kind of security stuff that is hard to revert. So you need to change the name of your software to really uh, to use it. It's, it's very very strange. It was hard, was hard to, to, to solve, you know, I, I read a lot of web pages about the problem and the solution was to change the name of the, of the browser. That's, that's interesting. Crazy. Is it the problem that the name is just too, one character too long or what? No, it's like the, the operating system has a blacklist of stuff and it has Chrome as a, 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 a I don't know, a danger for, for, for safety or whatever. And it's impossible to run Chrome. Ah, that's funny. That looks like Mike's out on the porch. You got it. Beautiful weather here. Yeah, it's uh, according to this. It's uh, what? Let's uh, let me see what the latest is. Is sixty five point eight four degrees in Milford right now? Let's get a little closer <laughs> than that. Gee. <laughs> well, the Accurite Tower which is one of the accurate temperature sensors, temperature and humidity sensors, gives you two uh, decimal places to the right of the period of the decimal point. Yeah, my, my temperature thing says it's 66 degrees. There's no decimal place, it's just 66 degrees. <laughs> okay, What's, uh, what, what is the um, sensor? It's, it's not. It's just uh, the toolbar down on, on the desktop. Oh. <laughs> so it's not a local sensor then? No, nah, it's getting the uh, temperature from the airport down the road. Oh, okay. So, and it rounds, it rounds stuff up or down. Yep. <laughs> no yep. decimal points there either. No decimal points there. <laughs> My, uh, now my e-paper display says it's 69 degrees. Well, that's probably that, your pan there. That hasn't updated yet. That, that needs to update. So how often does it update? Once an hour. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Things been running for two months on a single charge and until it uh it is at uh oh it it, it might actually need to be charged soon it's at 55 percent well these accurate uh, temperature humidity sensors um use two double a cells and I haven't had one have to have the double A cells replaced, except for one that I had outside. 
And the problem is the temperature outside goes low enough. I actually have to use um, the disposable lithium batteries on that. Yeah. Because the alkaline energy, uh, you get down to, I don't know, around zero Fahrenheit, and they don't like that too much. No, they will suck the energy right out of them. Well, I don't know if that's recoverable or not. In other words, I think it's just the chemical process slows down to the point that it won't keep the thing running. I don't know. My, uh, my doorbell camera, I had alkalines in it over the winter. And once it was dead, it was dead. I couldn't. Really? Yeah. No, okay. It didn't even last. It probably lasted two weeks, but once it died, it was, that, that was it. And it warmed up enough where you would have thought that if it was going to recover, it should have recovered. So have you tried putting uh, the disposable lithium ions in that or not? No, but that's probably a good idea. Because they tend to be a little less temperature sensitive. It's probably a good idea. I'll have to check. I guess you can get those as a double A, double A size. Oh yeah, you can get those in all the standard double A, triple A, nine volt, etc. Yeah. Now, be prepared. Yeah, that's good to know because yeah, I have a problem with my. Um motion sensors on my over over my garage door when there's motion it turns on the uh the lights in the front yard and i just put you know they take double a batteries and boy it gets cold they die and yeah never come back never come back yeah the the lithium uh, ions however be prepared for a little sticker shock <laughs> they are expensive <laughs> but but they 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 last longer than than uh, alkalides too, though, right? Uh, that they do. So, but uh, not long enough to uh, offset <laughs> the cost differential. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they are they are expensive, but they they are much less temperature sensitive. Sounds like somebody wants some peanuts. Or, or is that no, 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 it's not here. Oh, that's my that's my neighbor's dog. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little too loud outside. So what are we looking at here? What will the earth look like? After all the ice has um, melted. We people survey, what should lawmakers do? Should they raise the federal debt ceiling? Do you know the deficit look at this? What? Only half of Americans said yes, but we know that that is absolutely critical. Uh, to Somebody's listening to, to television. <laughs> Not me. That's me. Leroy, Leroy this is the, the, Cutting. the controller. You see? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a nine ten. Yeah, those are those are funky little controllers, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Has ten pieces for twenty five bucks. Exactly. Yeah. That's not a bad deal. Yeah, the they're. Uh... You can buy one for one twenty seven. They're cheap, but they're kind of funky. They're they're. Uh... Well, they they uh, maximum voltage is one, one point point two volts, uh, one one point two amperes, uh, current. Uh, it's for small motors, you know, and the range of the voltage is until twelve volts or so. Right. And it's low voltage, 
low uh, drop uh, drop all voltage also. So they they work cold. You don't need a heatsink, but it's for small motors, small robots. But it's okay for the TT motor, the the one I am using. But this isn't the actual one. I I I am waiting for the new one from Amazon, but I am browsing with another browser. So I, I don't understand how it works. It's very strange. Home is the search is weird. Yeah, don't the bigger drivers usually have um, heat sinks on bigger MOSFETs? No, I, I think they are they are no no MOSFET, just transistors. Yeah. Bipolar transistors. I would expect the MOSFETs to jack the price up a bit. I don't see the, let me look for the, the code of the, the board I am talking about. It's really amazing how warm it is there. Yeah, I was out on my bike yesterday, pedaling around. I I could I could live with February being this warm all year long, or Ohio all being this long. warm all like, all year long. <laughs> okay. All the yeah, time. Like say, all the time. Every year. But then they say you you couldn't afford to live here. Yeah, it's true. So what's your background? You look like you're in France, maybe. Whose studio is that? That is Rick and Morty. Oh. <laughs> That's Rick Sanchez's garage. <laughs> yep. I, I see my new background has generated all kinds of interest. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> asks. I'm back. Okay. Now I use this code. Oh. What is this? TV six 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 one two FNG. FNG. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Spark fun motor drivers. Oh, I think I've used a couple of these. I think I've used this this motor driver before. The, the chip is very tiny. The... And there's no heat sink on it. No. Hmm. And it's bipolar. That's strange. No, but this is I would bipolar. expect. 
This is I'm MOSFET. sorry. This is MOSFET. This 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 is MOSFET. It's very low. Uh, oh, the, it low is percent. MOSFET. Yeah, okay. yes, yes. You have it, Troy? Uh, Roy? I think I've used. I think I've got a couple of these. I don't know. I don't remember if I've used these or not. Yeah, with MOSFETs, they're not going to dissipate as much heat. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I, I don't think I've used these. That uh, that logic chart doesn't look like something I've used. I have used the other ones, the the nine tens, ninety one tens, or whatever those things are. Those are kind of funky. Screen. You see, the, you, you can drive uh, two motors, A, A01, A02 is a motor, mm -hmm. B0, B01 and B02 is another motor, okay? This is the ground and the motor voltage here. This VCC is the logic, logic voltage of the chip. So here you have two PWM signals, A here at the top and B here close to the ground. So uh, you put here the speed of the motor and then you use these two pins to decide uh, the duration of two uh, of each bridge uh, driver. This is like a like an the, the PWM signal uh, works like an an enable signal that turns on and off all the all the all the driver. But you can decide uh, how the the current moves in the in the in the motor in what direction. You put both pins in the same value you force the motor to stop because you create a short in the in the motor so there is an active way of stop the motor if you have a problem problems with inertia you can stop the motor with this chip and uh, the price of this thing mm, Nighting sparphone. Well, this is the sparphone ones, you know. You can buy uh, uh, another one that is a replacement. I think I it, got this one, this one. This is the one I I bought. Three of them for 40, 14 box but it's the same yeah it's a, it's a a copy of the sparphone one but cheaper in this case I, I was looking for one that was cheap as soon as possible so this was a, the best solution they they sent it, it in, in two days I asked for it two days ago and now it's in my, in my mailbox. Well, my, my idea is to, to connect the Raspberry Pi Zero using both PWM signals of the Raspberry Pi Zero. They, they support a P, PWM a, a, control in all the pins, but it's a software, you know? So your program will, will go slow because there are continuously interruptions to simulate the, the PWM 
you are interrupting all the time the program to, to change the value of the pins. So it's better to use the hardware uh, PWM uh, controllers. The Python is already slow. So if you use PWM software in two pins, well, will be slower and slower. So this is the... Seems to me like I've used these motor drivers before on something. Maybe maybe one of the robots I bought has has these. I think that the also uh, the, there is the mic uh, mic was steeper. Spirefoon has another another board uh, to move to move steeper motors, but it can be used for linear motors. Maybe maybe that that's. You can control the speed yep. and, the, and the direction. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I know I've uh, I've used one of those L298 boards and put the PWM on the enable pin before. Okay. That works. But I don't, I don't. I don't really remember this truth table or this logic table. Well, I, I, I was uh, studying the, the table and uh, I don't understand how it works, but I, I saw several uh, code uh, examples and it's, it's just one direction. Uh -huh. It's uh, one zero and the other direction is zero one. Yeah. And the PWM defined the speed. So there is yeah. no, no signs there. So yeah. There's an, another states that it is break and do nothing with the other combination of the pins. But the table is not clear for me. I, I don't see the, the functionality clear there, but supposedly it works. Yeah. See, I thought I thought you were uh, wanting to only use uh, four pins total, but you're using six pins. Yeah. yeah. This is the, the, the actual uh, board I am using. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what is my finger there. Here, there are two Ash Bridge drivers, so. You, you want to modulate the speed, you need to switch right or left signal. So that's why you need four PWM signals. You, you want to go in both directions. Yep. Well, next week I will show how, how the new driver works. But I, I hope to have my full robot assembled and, and play with the virtual network uh, connection from my desktop or my laptop. Next week we have a in-person meeting or not? Yeah, yeah, yep. Next so, week is in person. So I will bring my, my laptop to the meeting. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Next week is? The 30, okay, yeah, right. There's only 28 days in February. Yeah. Try to add a couple more days. That's it's all right. Yeah, I was <laughs> obviously being innumerate. So so next week is the second. Okay, so so March will go in like a lamb and out like a lion. Is that what's going to happen? What? That was an old saying. March comes in like a lamb, goes out like a lion, or vice versa. So oh, if okay. the first day of March is, is very cold, then the last day of March will be warm and pleasant. Well, you never know. <laughs> 
But if we have good weather going into March, that means the winter is going to persist. It's kind of like one of those things like, what is the guy the name of the groundhog? Punks of Tammany. Phil. Phil, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, we. I, I think we still will be another snow, snowing day. Another six weeks of winter. If, if Punks of Tammany, what is it? Which way is it? If he sees his shadow? I, I think he, he died. There is a new one now. No. Oh, he, he croaks. <laughs> they 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 have to replace him every last year two years anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody decided the groundhog was good to eat. <laughs> Groundhogs don't last forever. They have to replace him every now and then anyway. Yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh one year wasn't too long ago it it was snowing on easter and we were we took the grandkids and we're trying to find easter eggs out in the middle of a freaking snowstorm yeah that was that was not fun <laughs> his didn't care they were like snow All the parents standing around going, we're freezing, we're freezing, come on, get out, get this done, let's go. <laughs> you guys want to be in, part of the in crowd? What's this? Zello. <laughs> no it's place like that. Accu relief, mini tens, electrotherapy, joint back pain relief. It's got a battery in it. Okay. Yeah, one of my one of my uh, nephews is using it. He's got a problem, a joint problem, I guess. And this supposedly hides the pain. Electrotherapy, therapy, electrotherapy. This is like a pulse in the muscles to to hit them. Yep. It's a transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulator. No. That sounds like snake oil to me. Uh -oh. yeah. It sounds like NASA. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I send you to outer space. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of our group's already spacey, so we'll be right at home. <laughs> there you go. That's what it looks like. So where do you put the electrodes? I assume you put them around your elbow. In this case, if you're going to use it on your elbow. Okay. Let's pull it out, see what it looks like. So you're going to wear this for a while and report back how it works for you there, Jim? Yeah, that's what I need. If it, if it solves my back pain, you're right there. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So if you, <clears throat> how would, how would that, if you put it on your elbow, how would that solve your back pain? I suspect you might have to put it on your back for your back pain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious about that, you know. <laughs> no, right. You, you can use it in a drawer with a drawer pain. Yeah. Or whatever, whatever is pain, you put it. I got a headache. Can I put it there? <laughs> I would put one on each eyelid. And yeah, you know. there you go. <laughs> and you put it around your neck and see if it fixes uh, Gail's pain in the neck. I don't know. <laughs> oh man <laughs> he got one for me but it plugs in the wall i'm a little suspicious of that you know <laughs> she's saying she's saving on batteries i don't know <laughs> Those... 
it's the smoke and all that that bothers me though. Yeah. <laughs> when it starts smoking, that bothers me. So. Hmm. So be aware, I'll try it. <laughs> if if we don't see you next uh next uh, week we'll know that it uh, failed miserably. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hip that's going out on me, so I need to try it on that hip. It's a, oh yeah, that'd be a miracle. When you say it's going out on you, what does that mean? Well, you know, people lose their hip, they have hip replacements. I've got the, oh yeah. Yeah. So I, but I've made to, I managed to maintain my knees. They were going at one time. Now it's the hip. I'm hoping I can maintain it. I've got ma magic potions that I use to maintain my knees. I'm going to try my hip next. We don't want to get started on our ailments. The older guys. Are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that would uh, extend the meeting quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. We'd have to have a yeah adjunct meeting. Yeah. Uh, see, Vicente uh, updated his background. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we're in the same universe. I stole <laughs> it from Roy. <laughs> see, see you in the mirror. In the mirror. Yeah, everybody's changing to an alternate universe here. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. All I have is the cat universe. The cat universe. It it finally updated, but it says it's 67 yeah. now. And my computer still says it's 66. So they're pretty close. Close enough for government work. <sighs> it's pretty amazing that it's that warm out there. I'll take it. I won't complain. I'll, I'll put it this way. It's warmer there than it is here. Here it's, uh, uh, let me just check. Well, but, but tonight, overnight, it's supposed to be 28 degrees. So, yeah, it's going to get cold really fast. <laughs> and we're going to have to close the doors and Turn the heat back on. <laughs> and then uh, according to this thing, Friday, it is supposed to be 51. And uh, the low would be 30. And overnight, it's supposed to be 34 on Friday. And Saturday, we're back to 65 degrees again. So... We're in for a couple more days of cold weather, I think. Yeah, hopefully we get some snow. Uh, yeah, I think. I don't really, I don't really need snow right now. The grandkids would uh, like it. Yeah, there's hills to slide down. <laughs> yeah. I bought my grandson a snowboard for Christmas, so uh, so we can go out together. There you go. Uh, is that the it's a little blurry jim is that the weather yeah for the next seven days okay 
Yeah, so it's a little blurry when I look at it. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, I went uh, looking at something to order from China. Of course, their prices are always great, but there was a disclaimer on the bottom that warned me that there could be potential extra handling charges. What? And they weren't willing to disclose what that could be. And I noticed one of the items I saw on AliExpress uh, shipped from Moscow. I'm like, oh, that'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think one of the people from one of those guys from the three letter agencies might show up at your door. <laughs> <laughs> I decided not to buy it, you know. Um, when did when did you see this new disclaimer? Because uh, yesterday, 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 I was looking for. Um, LED lights for my bicycle. Uh -huh. And they were like $13 for um, a rear light and a headlight. But it, it had that disclaimer on there that there could be additional um, handling and shipping charges. Yeah, they, they did drip, drop ship uh, uh, something I ordered. It was a soldering iron uh, tip. Uh, they drop shipped it from Lithuania or somewhere, some weird place. <laughs> really? Man, yeah. But or actually, it was supposed to be there. It, came, it was an empty envelope that <laughs> came from there. <laughs> I wonder if they're talking about taxes, though. Or uh, tariffs. Tariffs, yeah. Which is taxable for them. Yeah, if, yeah. if China and uh, start sending weapons to Russia, uh, could be very interesting situations evolve from that. Because I suspect they would shut down purchases. Yeah. Hmm. We have interesting things going on. Yeah. Interesting is a euphemism for ouch. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, is it Mauser? No. One of those, one of those companies like Mauser. They were charging a tariff fee on stuff that came from China. But when I bought directly from China, I didn't get the tariff. So I don't know, but I wonder if that's what they're talking about is like like the tariffs. Yeah. Well, some of these Chinese companies are stocking in the U.S. now. So, yeah, but even if it's stocked in the U.S., Somebody's got to pay the tariff somewhere. Because uh, who was it? It wasn't. It wasn't Mauser. Um, it it was a company like Mauser that stocks a bunch of electronics parts, and they're here in the U.S. I mean, the the stuff got to me in like two days. The price. The prices were just as good as if I had ordered them from directly from China except I paid shipping and I paid a tariff. And I wasn't happy about the, the tariff. I didn't mind about the shipping. I wasn't happy about the tariff. <laughs> it's all dollars. Yeah. Well, I figured, I figured, you know, um, China's started charging shipping now anyway. So, you know, I'm going, you're going to be stuck paying shipping one way or the other. 
but I don't I don't know. I don't know what, what they would be talking about. Those little boards yeah. that I shipped for the floodlights, though there, there was no shipping on those. They were less than a buck a piece and there was no shipping. Yeah. So they did the packet deal the small item I'm sure is came in an envelope like thing. But I paid like two bucks and boom. Yeah, I mean. So I was looking to buy a motor last year, and um, it was coming from China. And while while I was looking at a video that was linked, because I had multiple picture views, and one of them was a video. And on the video, the guy's explaining how to wire this motor up. But in the background, he has his laptop running a video. And the laptop is displaying that if you say you want to order it through our German warehouse, <laughs> it will come from our Chinese warehouse, but you won't pay the tariffs. There you go. And I thought, that's pretty shady. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty shady. Okay. It's, uh, it's coming, <laughs> it's coming uh, to you via Germany. But it's really coming from China. I actually had a package. I didn't tell them to ship it this way. They just shipped it like that. And it came via DHL. And it did actually show up as a track trackable item out of Germany. Oh, okay. And maybe they were trying to get around the tariffs. I don't know. It could be they just have a warehouse there. That's some. Um... If they do a lot of business in Germany, they might have a stock warehouse. Sure, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, but I, I thought it was kind of interesting because I did or I ordered something and it was a you know clearly a Chinese company. And the tracking number said DHL and it's Luxembourg or somewhere. It it is Luxembourg? It's, think so it was some luxembourg place. isn't in germany where's that <laughs> Where, that's where's a different luxembourg? country where's luxembourg luxembourg is a country it's right that's next a... to venezuela okay well oh yeah <laughs> it sound it sounded german luxembourg i don't know I think that's where it said it was coming from, though. And it was DHL. And it took, I don't know, it didn't take very long to get here. I lost part of my spaceship. I dropped it on the floor. I can't find it now. But that was uh, that was before COVID happened. So that was when all the all the tariff stuff was really really going on big time anyway. So maybe they were trying to get around uh, tariffs. Oh yeah. Luxembourg, the Duchy of Luxembourg is a small landlocked country in Western Europe. It's a separate country. It's a separate country. Very small, but a separate country. It, it is kind of close to Germany. Uh, well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> pretty much any place in Europe is close to Germany. <laughs> In Germany or Austria. That's that's kind of interesting. So I'm pretty sure that's where it said it was coming from. I don't know. I I got that years ago, so it could have been coming from anywhere. I just thought it was interesting because I don't usually order stuff from Europe because it costs too much to do that. 
Well, if they're trying to balance their inventory between countries, you know, could be you got a special deal. Yeah. Well, it could be that they had a partial flight or something and they needed to fill up more more spots too. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what they were doing? All right. It is about three till. So Yep. Is in this time zone too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> amazing how that works <laughs> you guys want to want to call it and we'll see everybody no. next week no come come think of it there is a country that is on a half hour um uh, um uh, mumbai is yeah yeah somebody hacked my um honeywell thermostat <laughs> and I, I couldn't get around to hack and I found out that it's like, uh, yeah, they got into Honeywell site and told everybody else's thermostats that they were on Mumbai time. <laughs> so you're always a half hour off. Really screwed it up. Yeah, we used to have contractors. When I was at Kaiser, we had subcontractors in, uh, um, I guess that's Western India. And it was a pain because we always had to adjust the time in order to uh, have meetings. This was before Zoom. And uh, yeah. Or you have to stay up well past normal going to bedtime so you could have a conversation with your partners halfway well, across the yeah. world. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> that that's true anytime uh, you're multiple time zones away. I had an operation in Kuala Lumpur back in the, I'm trying to think when that was, that was uh, um, I guess that was in the late 90s or early 90s and they were pretty close to 12 hours out of sync mm -hmm. and those guys loved to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning and talk about the most trivial problem <laughs> i think they were doing it for entertainment oh gee the drinking fountain is work what well, call art <laughs> yeah okay we talked out up oh, yeah it's, yep. it's it's that time see you next week and live oh. show next week Man. all right all right. take care we'll see everybody later Nice. Take care. Bye, Bye now. Bye.